morning, everyone. Thanks for watching my daily video blog. Yes, we're on day five of my blog and the 49th day of sheltering at home with my family. We are doing well. I mostly stayed away from the news these last two days and that has felt really good. I know we need to be informed and to stay in touch with responsible journalism and experts, avoiding those nasty conspiracy theories and unscientific sources. I'm used to waking up listening to public radio, but I'm having to dial back my news consumption as I try to tend to my own mental health. I hope you're doing well with your mental health. Coping where you need to cope with extra pressure and shining in specialness as some of you rise and thrive in these kinds of situations. Do keep your comments and suggestions coming relative to my blog. I'd also just love to hear what was wonderful for you in your world last week. What new online expressions of spirituality have been meaningful for you? What has your congregation been doing to stay connected? Tell me a little in the comments if, uh, if you would. Of course, my main purpose here remains uh, the big daily announcement. I'll share that in a few moments. I am reminding you every day about the Community of Christ Daily Prayer for Peace country of the day. We'll have a book recommendation from our resident 13-year-old book club hosting, all-round book-loving kid, Tiona. I'll also tell you about a check-in I had yesterday. Did you watch the Community of Christ Facebook Lives on the weekend? I hope you're taking advantage of those. Um, of course, normally the Daily Prayer for Peace takes place in the Temple in Independence at 1 p.m., but this is pandemic time and everything is a little disrupted. I don't know what it's going to look like when this settles down. I really need to check in with Janae and Ginny and find out what the latest thinking is. But I'm kind of loving live DPPs from the World Church leaders in their homes. I'm thinking it would be really cool to have remote daily prayer for peace broadcasts uh, from remote locations all around the world every day all year long. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. But all this was just to say I'm going to remind you uh, what country we're remembering with the DPP today. Today's daily prayer for peace country is Djibouti. I've never been there. Have you? Find a Daily Prayer for Peace on the Community of Christ website or write your own and send it in to be included in the collection. Or meditate on the word peace. But today, remember Djibouti. And remember there's a world out there. The book Tiona is recommending today is My Secret Guide to Paris by Lisa Schroeder. It was published in 2015 by Scholastic. And Tiona says, My Secret Guide to Paris is an amazing book. I first read this book before going to Paris in the summer of 2018. This book is about a girl who loves Paris. Once a month, she visits her grandmother in New York and learns about Paris from her Paris-loving grandmother. Her grandmother travels to Paris for her work as a fashion designer. She dreams of going to Paris. Then her grandmother dies and leaves her a plane ticket, a map, and a scavenger hunt. I love this book, says Tiona. It's one of my favorite books that is not fantasy. Also, I've been to a few of the places in the book in Paris because of reading this book. And that's true. Uh, Tiona actually led us to some wonderful places in Paris because of this book. If it wasn't for um, My Secret Guide to Paris, we might never have made it to the Orangerie Museum 
to stand surrounded for an afternoon by 360 degrees of Monet's water lilies. If you ever get a chance to do that, do it. Thanks, Tiona, for the book recommendation, and I hope you're finding these helpful. It's time for my daily check-in. We've kind of been tripping and traveling all around the places I serve in my church work with Community of Christ. I know I always say that I check in with one person and one place. Today, that's only partly true. <laughs> Yesterday, I spent a wonderful hour on a Facebook Messenger voice call with Georgia, Corey, and Ethan in Grand Cayman. Yes, that's indeed one place, but three people who make up one family. Corey serves as the pastor of our congregation, our Community of Christ congregation in Georgetown, Grand Cayman. I'm always surprised uh, that I keep having to update my list of the number of people I'm aware of who've stopped in Grand Cayman on vacation or on a cruise and have visited that church building or that congregation. It's a bustling little place, known for their active youth ministry, their kids' volleyball night, and the breakfasts they serve every Sunday morning. I finally made it to Grand Cayman for my first visit as their apostle in January of this year. Although I'd been there before, I briefly served as Mission Center president there back in 2004 and 2005. But when Corey was telling me what to expect these days for Sunday morning, he explained that the majority of the congregation on Sunday mornings is usually kids. Nice. Our church in Cayman is a magnificently multicultural affair too, with people having backgrounds in Jamaica, Bolivia, Honduras, Cuba. They've had a lot of people go to Graceland over the years too. So you might have bumped into uh, folks from Grand Cayman while you were at Graceland. If you arrive in Cayman by air, you can see paintings at the airport by Miss Lassie, who is described on the little plaques below the paintings as a national treasure. She was a member of Community of Christ. And we have one of her paintings hanging in the temple in Independence and two hanging in our church building in Grand Cayman. Corey has been keeping in touch with Community of Christ members and friends by phone when not bumping into them in the grocery store. And he says that people are doing okay. Their son, Ethan, has been home from school since March 16th. They're doing school online for the rest of the year, which Ethan likes because he can usually manage to finish his total daily school work in about three hours. He misses seeing his friends and he does get to uh, talk to them while they play video games online together from their remote locations. Georgia and Corey are both still working. Georgia is a nurse at the public hospital in Georgetown. So she's on the front lines, trying to protect others from the pandemic while staying, trying to stay safe herself. She described the stress associated with the extra personal protective equipment and caution that they have to use every day. She can't just run home to bring Ethan lunch when she has a break because there's the whole drill of decontaminating. Corey is not far away from Georgia at the private hospital. He's the support services director at Doctors Hospital. I was interested to hear him say that while selective surgeries were canceled there at the start of the pandemic, Corey and his team have been keeping very busy setting up a new tent triage facility at the front of the hospital. They check people for any flu-like symptoms out there in those tents. COVID patients are directed to the public hospital. Both Georgia's and Corey's hospitals are now set up to do COVID-19 testing. The island 
is glad to have been able to purchase a large number of tests from South Korea. So frontline workers are finally being tested and others will get to be tested too. The island has been very much locked down in a place that is normally bustling and busy with visitors in a tourism-based economy. All the hotels are closed except for one that is being used to quarantine people returning from overseas. They've had a curfew and people are only able to go out on half the days of the week based on the first letters of their last name. On Sundays, nobody's supposed to be on the roads except for emergencies. People aren't supposed to be driving far away for exercise um, because some people were taking advantage of that excuse to be out traveling. They're only supposed to be out close to home for 90 minutes of exercise a day. We compared how things are going here and there and then spent the rest of our call sharing our mutual concern for folks in other very vulnerable places on other Caribbean islands we have ties to. Thanks so much to Georgia, Corey, and Ethan for checking in with me and with us, and especially for all you're doing to serve your community. Well, it's time for our big announcement. I didn't see any comments asking me to move the segment to the beginning of my blog. So it's here still in the same spot for the fifth day in a row, but it's still the star of my show, right? Like I say every day, I've done the research so you don't have to. I've consulted a team of experts. Yeah, you know, if you've been here before, it's really my wife, Laura, who keeps me grounded and who's always by my side, ready to respond in every moment when I turn to her and ask, sweetheart, what day is today? <laughs> okay, so here it is, today's big announcement. Da 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 Now in this moment, now in this day, but the question is, what day is today? Wait for it. Today is Monday. Oh, Monday. Happy Monday. I know, I know. Monday, right? Sorry, folks. It's Monday. For some of us, that means the start of another week at home. Tiona's back to daily virtual schoolwork. Um, maybe that explains her enthusiasm for Monday. Uh, but for people like Georgia, that's another week of putting on that personal protective equipment and toiling to take care of us in spite of all the risks. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep you much longer than that. I'm hoping to be back again tomorrow with another What Day Is Today video blog. I didn't know how long this would last when I started. I feel like we're over the hump on our way to logging one full week of what day is today. Again, tomorrow, I'll be reminding you of the daily prayer for peace country for the day. I'll see if Tiona's got another book recommendation and I'll check in uh, with another person and update you on how they're doing. I did want to say, if you're looking for good things to fill the gaps in your life or for when you're taking a break from listening to the news, or if you don't have What Day Is Today video blogs on Continuous Loop, I'd like to suggest you check out the Religion in a Minute vlog by Brian Caruana. That's the Religion in a Minute vlog by Brian Caruana. Brian is the director of the Encounter World Religion Center from Ontario, Canada. Encounter is amazing. It's been sponsored by Community of Christ in Canada for more than 20 years. Their flagship program is the Discovery Week every summer in Toronto, where you get to go and experience the religions of the world firsthand. But while none of us are doing much going right now, the Religion in a Minute vlog is perfect. Brian will introduce you to profound spiritual ideas by presenting you physical objects from the world's great religious traditions. I binged like a dozen of these last night, and they are fantastic. 
They're easy to find on YouTube. Just search for Religion in a Minute or go to the Encounter World Religions channel. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so I'm signing off for now from my home in Independence, Missouri. Please, until tomorrow, remember to breathe.